Hi friends and welcome to another Sunnyside Design Tutorial. We're here in Steph's living room again and we're doing part three of our series on um, her fireplace mantle surround and today it's the corbels. Yeah, I'm so excited. These beauties right here, oh, I love them. I found them at a vintage market up in Logan a couple of years back. I didn't know really what I was gonna use them for but I knew they would make a great statement somewhere in my house. So I snagged them, saved them. I've probably had them a good four years or more yeah, probably. <laughs> before, you know, I figure out what I'm gonna do. But they are gorgeous. I love them. So come take a look with us. See the original state. These are really, really old. The wood was falling apart. There were holes in them. I mean, you'll see. She so fixed them up good. I did. And it was really fun. I felt like a little carpenter, so join us to see how we spruced these up to make them work for our fireplace and hope you enjoy. I'm so glad that I found these three corbels at our vintage market and I snagged them up. Um, even better that I had three. You can see here that they are very old, very worn. There are broken parts. There's holes in them they really were just falling apart. And again, I wasn't really sure where I was going to use them in my home. I just knew they would make a great statement somewhere. So when I decided to use them on the fireplace, I just was so excited to start tearing into them. So what I did was went through the most damaged corbel and labeled it with the word parts, just so I knew that this was the one I was going to be taking apart to use for parts because I only needed two corbels. So you can see here that I've labeled the bad corbel with numbers, and then I went ahead and numbered um, the corresponding numbers on the two corbels that we were going to keep, just so I knew what piece I was using from the parts corbel and where I was going to put it on the other two corbels. That way I knew exactly where I was pulling from and exactly where I was going to put the new piece. All right, now it's time to get down and dirty. The first thing that we started with was trying to remove all of the nails. Lucky for us, I mean, we didn't really know this till we got working on the corbels and started taking them apart, but we were hoping that they were just nailed together. And that was the case for us. So that was better for us to take it apart. Had it been secured together with wood glue, and nails, it would have been a lot more difficult to take apart. So we removed as many of the nails as we could from the outer edge, and then we took a heavy duty flat pry bar and just stuck it in between the pieces of wood and just hammered gently just to loosen it up. And we went around all sides of the corbel, loosening up in between each of the different pieces. And again, this wood was really fragile. Of course, you can see that it's breaking in parts already. We did actually break some other parts off, but we were able to glue them together and they still worked. Um, so basically, you're just going to go around the entire piece, loosening up the joints. And then once you get um, the wood pieces separated, you're going to see just how many nails really were in there holding it together. So you're going to need to take those out as well. The easiest way we found to get these wood sections apart was using a hacksaw. Uh, like I said, this was secured together with nails and they were the longest nails I've seen in my life. <laughs> that was how this was all held together. So using the hacksaw was allowed us to get these separate wood pieces apart. And then you can see just how many nails were in there, like so many. And so we tried to hammer them out, pull them out with needle nose pliers. Um, we just did what we had to do to get them out. Some of them really just were stuck in there. So we just hammered them in so that at least the nail was flush to the wood so that when we put the wood um, adjoining the other pieces of wood to create the brand new corbel, it would be flat and flush together. Once we had each of these separate wood sections taken apart, we lined them up next to each other just to see where they were going to fit to make the new corbel, just to make sure we had everything ready to go. 
you can see here I'm repairing a broken piece of wood. Um, we're just using a little bit of wood glue and we are also using our pneumatic um, brad nailer and we used two inch brads uh, just to make sure we had again like these were originally held together with super long nails <laughs> so we wanted to have these as sturdy as possible um, so you can see that I'm just now gluing up each additional section and attaching them into place with the brad nailer um, this these corbels are purely decorative they are not holding up our mantle if you missed the mantle video you can check that out it will be in the links below um, we were able to create a mantle that was floating and it is secured to the wall by itself so these are purely decorative they're not holding any weight um, but we did want the corbels themselves to be held together and not come apart uh, the, you know, again the wood was fragile and breaking and so with wood glue and these um, brads with the pneumatic nail gun this is very sturdy now it's not you would have a hard time pulling it apart at this point if you were to try also remember whenever you're working with wood glue make sure to have a damp washcloth handy you're going to want to wipe off any excess glue that squirts out from in between these sections of wood um, otherwise it's going to be just this thick glob of glue that you're going to have to paint over so you want to clean up your mess while it's still wet and where we applied glue in between each of these layers and then stapled it all shut shut's the wrong word we stapled it all together <laughs> this there was a lot of glue that came out so just make sure you clean it all up and then allow it to fully cure make sure to look at the directions for your specific glue you're using and when it's secure you are ready to install these Here's a close-up look of the corbels after we'd put them all together and they were drying. Um, it really did come together nicely and it was so fun to work on. It was a good little bonding moment, my husband and I, getting to be little carpenters. It was fun. Um, and then you can see that poor third corbel. <laughs> look what a mess we made of it and all those nails. Oh my goodness. But it was really just like the perfect pieces. All those other scrap pieces would not have done us any good. So we were able to salvage what we needed and they turned out great. For installation, we secured cleats onto the wall into the studs to hold up our surround that we made out of MDF. You can see that in our tutorial next week. Um, first we installed the mantle. That was our number one thing we needed in place. Then we secured this um, MDF surround in place before we could actually put the corbels on. Again, these corbels are not actually supporting any weight. So we put a ton of wood glue on the back of them and then used our brad nailer again with the long two inch brads and angled in through the sides so it would go through the corbel and into the MDF and it would it's all secured to the wall with the cleats into the studs so they're not going anywhere. After they were installed we caulked in between all of the seams that were visible. We filled in all of the nail holes with putty and gave it a fresh coat of paint. And then because they were old and I love that vintage chippy paint look, we did sand the edges just a little bit to give it a little bit of that old vintage character still. And I am so happy with the way it looks. Let us know what you think and if you would have done it any differently. We'd love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It really was a quick project. It was fun to work on with my husband. And if you, would like to check out our full blog post, we will have like 20 plus ideas for you on ways to use corbels. This, you know, doesn't have to just be with a fireplace. There are a lot of different ways you can incorporate corbels into your home for functional purposes or just decor. So check that out and just be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like our tutorials, follow us on social media, head to our site, all of that's down below. 
Right. Anything you want to say? <laughs> Just thanks for watching and here at Sunnyside Design where we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street. And be sure to tune in next Saturday because we will have part four of our fireplace series and Absolutely. we will show you things behind us that we can't tell you now. You have to come back. <laughs> we'll show you how we did all of the molding and everything will be done and yeah. finished. All right. We'll see you then.